So next we have uh, Yu Gang, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name somewhat correctly. Um, thank you for your comments as a discussant just before. And now you get to present your own work, um, which is titled The Response of Local Corporate Sustainability to Environmental Disasters, Ev Evidence from Wildfires. So before we had extreme heat effect on performance, and now we're going to look at how sort of these types of events or wildfires affect actual sustainability practices, I believe. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Over to you, Yugo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, many thanks for this conference and very glad to share my research. This is a joint work with IONIS when I visit the University of Oregon. And the title is The Response of Local Corporate Sustainability to the Environmental Disasters Evidence from Wildfire. It's about estimating the impact of wildfire on the annual change of local corporate sustainability. The background is the global warming. The climate change has made natural disasters such as the wildfires more common in dangerous wildlife and generating great economical costs. Given this situation, the society has called on the corporations to step up and make up for the damage caused by such events, according to the article in the purpose. Uh, firms may engage in the project of sustainability at the request of the stakeholders but from other sides, to increase the sustainability is very costly and the benefit may only appear in the long run. So the question is whether and how does corporate sustainability respond to such environmental disasters. Related literature has, has studied the growth of corporate giving in the wake of disasters, for instance, defined the firms respond to a disaster faster and offer larger donations if they operate near the city where it occurs. And according to the paper by Johnson, there is a wide range of activity of corporate philanthropy, such as uh, cash gatherings to the impacted families and so on. Our paper, our paper extends the impact of environmental disaster from corporate giving to corporate sustainability. That is, we will investigate whether the occurrence of wildfire will promote the local firms to take some environmental conscious actions, such as decrease the pollution and waste or use more renewable energy. To estimate this response, we focus on wildfire. Because wildfire is a very frequent type of environmental disaster in the US and is widely discussed by the ecologist and the environmental science and associated with the deforestation and the global warming. Overall, we find a one standard deviation increase in the fraction of the county band area will double the annual change of its corporate environmental sustainability relative to the average. Besides, we repeat our analysis using one more concrete measures that is the air enforcement from EPA. Under the notion, the air enforcement should decrease if the local environmental sustainability increase. Indeed, we estimate a significant decreasing effect for both formal and informal air enforcement. And we also find the effect is only significant in counties where the fraction of climate change believer is high. And we also find the effect is only significant in democratic counties, but not in Republican counties. Our results provide some consolations in the aftermath, aftermath of the wildfire. According to the literature, the welfare cost of wildfire is very high. And all results show the wildfire induced the increase of the environmental sustainability is somehow the welfare compensation, which is similar to the natural disaster induced adoption of risk mitigating technology showed by Mill and Pop. So let's begin by developing our hypothesis. 
According to the literature, there are three main reasons why firms may engage in the sustainability project. First, sustainability may give the uh, uh, pro protect and extend the time horizon of legislative action and anti waste. Second, a firm's consumer, investor, or employee might find out some director utility in the relationship with the firm if they know the firm is doing good. And the, the third reason says that the management of the firm may care about the catastrophe and thus they will divert the firm resources from the uh, fiduciary duty to the altruistic, altruistic projects. And this graph shows the framework why firms might engage in sustainability in the normal time. And now, someplace, the wildfire occurs. And the wildfire will get more attention and raise people's awareness of the environmental, envir environmental risk if a wildfire takes place in the local. So they are expected to save the wake up call of the uh, increase of the sustainability in the local area. And especially given the association between the wildfire uh, be, uh, with the uh, global warming and the deforestation, we propose, propose our first hypothesis that wildfires increase the corporate environmental sustainability in the counties where they occur. Of course, of course, there are some reasons for the non-hypothesis that, that the wildfire have no significant impact on the local corporate environmental sustainability. Uh, on the one side, the, to increase sustainability is very costly and the cost to increase the sustainability in the long run is higher than the corporate giving in the short run. And from other sides, the environmental risk might be less of concern for some communities. And at the same time, not all the stakeholders will promote the sustainability. For instance, only when investors come from countries with a strong common belief in environmental or social issues do, do they push for the corporate sustainability. And similarly, given the difference between the two polit political parties in America, uh, the impact of the divergence between, between the two American parties, so they may pay different attention to these environmental disaster events. Hence, we propose the second hypothesis to be tested. The effect of wildfires on the corporate environmental sustainability in a county depends on its communal belief about the climate change and its political partisanship. Okay, to test our hypothesis, we gathered several data sets. Uh, to measure the corporate sustainability, we use the MSI, MSI KLD data sets. The MSI KLD data sets include the environmental and the other aspects of the sustainability. For one more concrete measures, we also use the number of air formal and the informal in in enforcement action from EPA. To calculate the wildfire severity, we use the data from MTBS. The MTBS, they use the satellite data to map the extent of large fires. And with the coordinates of this white fires and the coordinates of the counties, we can use uh, the Python and its geopentas module to calculate the intersection of, of these two areas and to calculate the band fraction of wildfire for each county in a given year. And our final sample consists of an unbalanced panel of 587 counties during the period from 2003 to 2016. And this graph shows the average wildfire severity in our simple year. Uh, you, you can see counties have higher uh, wildfire severity located in California, Oregon, and Florida. 
we focus on the counties with the Russell 3000 firm. And this, this black dots are the location for this Russell 3000 firms. And all analysis is conducted at, uh, at the county level. We, uh, we construct a local portfolio by weighting the, the sustainability based on the firm size. This is an aggregate rating for the local sustainability. And we focus on the yearly change of this index. Of course, to make sure the change from this, in, from this index is not from the change of firm size, uh, we fix the firm size to the free previous year. And we then conduct this regression. We regress the annual change of environmental sensibility on the band fraction of wildfire and to control for the predetermined difference, we add a vector of controls and the county fixed effects and the year fixed effects. And this is our baseline result. And you can see uh, in the column one, the coefficient on the band fraction is about uh, 0.78 with a standard deviation of 0.18. It's statistically and uh, economically significant. It means a one standard deviation increase of white fire severity will double the change in the local environmental sustainability relative to its average. And in column two, when we add these controls, the result remain virtually the same. Besides, we conduct a palatable test. That is, we use non-environmental aspect aspects of the sustainability to be the dependent variable. Theoretically, the wildfire many have the significant effect on the environmental sustainability, but not on the non-environmental sustainability. If we find a significant effect on the non-environmental sustainability, this may indicate all result in the baseline result, all result may be driven by the omitted variable. And this result show when the other non-environmental sustainability as a dependent variable, the coefficient on the band fraction is not significant. And another worry in all setup is the potential instance firms might know the condition and the future of the area well enough to anticipate the environmental disasters and therefore studying improving the environmental sustainability in advance of the occur occurrence. In this case, the effect that we estimate does not arisen from the wildfire, but is part of the implication of the agenda that is planned. So to test this possibility, we repeat the, our estimation use the one or two year lag annual change of the county's environmental sustainability. And you can see the coefficient of the, the band fraction uh, is small and insignificant. It's implied the, uh, the, uh, the mentioned scenario is unlikely to be true. Similarly, we tested for the existence of the poster trends. The coefficient of the wildfire severity is, not, is also uh, not significant. So the wildfire effect on the sensibility uh, is uh, just uh, right after of its occurrence. And it doesn't contribute to any further growth in the local environmental sustainability. Even we have checked for the pre trains and uh, we conduct the political test, there is still a, a material variable bias. So to buttress the cultural impression of our results, we first uh, conduct a instrumental variable regression. We use the hot dry windy index of the instrument. This is an index for predicting the wildfire and it's the max product of the wind speed and the vapor pressure. We then uh, conduct a three-stage estimation. This is because 
the band fraction variable is the sensor and to avoid the pitfall of the forbidden regression. So we conduct this three stage estimation. The first stage is to regress the band fraction wildfire on the log of HDW index. And the second stage is regress of band fraction on the long non-linear fitted value of band fraction from the first stage. And the, the third stage is the regression of uh, the change in the environmental sensibility on the linear fitted value from the second stage. And this table shows the results. Then you can say the IWA result is, you can say in, in this column, the, the coefficient on the band fraction for the IV result is larger than the all LS, all LS estimates. This, this may be because there is some omitted variable. There's some unobserved uh, variable that might increase the sensibility. And at the same time, to be uh, negative correlate with the wildfire uh, severity, such as the environmental awareness in the local. So for the IV analysis, we also check the ex explosion restriction. We do it by the wider sample uh, according to the absence and the presence of the wildfire. And, and the result shows uh, given the absence and the presence of the wildfire, the HDW index has no impact on the uh, band fraction. So the H HDW mainly affects the local corporate sensibility through the wildfire. And now, and, and after now, we have tested the first hypothesis. And for the second hypothesis, we divide the sample according to the climate change believer and denier and the partisan shape. We find the effect is significant only in the counties with higher high fraction of climate change believer. And we also find uh, the result significant only in the democratic counties, but not in the Republican counties. Hey, just letting you know, we've got about two, three minutes left. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, and uh, we also, use a more concrete measure from the EPA uh, is the air enforcement actions and to repeat all analysis. And you can say, under the notion, the air enforcement action should decrease if the local environmental sensibility increase. And uh, we indeed estimate a significant uh, decrease in effect. And the subsample analysis for the uh, EPA air enforcement action is also support or a second hypothesis. Okay, to conclude, uh, we find the wildfire severity significantly increase the local environmental sensibility. And this effect vary between counties with different opinion on the climate change and the political partisanship. And for the future research, uh, although in our paper we have we find a causal relationship, causal relationship between the wildfire and the local environmental sensibility. Uh, but for the re future research, maybe need more empirical study on the channels why the wildfires affect the local environmental sensibility. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. So before we go to questions um, to discuss your paper um, and return the favor is Professor David Lomp. Sorry, I had the wrong information. Paul Griffin. Yeah, um, thank you. Let me, my schedule. Thanks, yeah, Paul. Let me, share, let me share screen here. Um, Great, so, we can um, see that. Jim, you can see that and I'll just bring it up on, on a... Uh, yeah, so you should see the entire slide now. Perfect. Next five minutes are yours, Paul. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, okay. Um, 
Kia ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, and thank you, uh, uh, Yu Gong, for your interesting paper. Um, definitely interesting, and I um, enjoyed reading it. So let me go to the comments. I've just got a few minutes. Um, so what's my main takeaway from the paper? Um, wildfires at the county level right, drive an increase in corporate sustainability ratings at the county level in the following year. So you've got a lag of one year. And the wildfire location is the county of the corporate HQ. Um, the wildfire measure is a percentage of the county burned in, in, the, in, the, in the T minus one the year before. And the, the sustainability measures are based on MSCI and there's another sustainalytics as well in there as well. Um, but that's a change from a T minus one to T. Uh, and the unit of analysis is sort of an aggregate of firms within the county is kind of a value or, or asset weighted aggregate. So that's what is, is looking at. So what we're looking at here, the basic equation, uh, this, was, this was on the screen earlier, is that it, our wildfires at T minus one, are they driving the, the, the Delta MSCI sustainability rating? Uh, so on one hand, you've got the wildfire, that's the physical event. On the other hand, you've got the, 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 the aggregators of this, of, of this sustainability information. Uh, issuing the ratings, um, but the concern I have is, you know, <laughs> what's in the middle there? What, what are the missing variables? And you've got, you, I think you've got kind of two types of missing variables. That is the firm's actions to improve sustainability. They, you know, they may do something in response to the wildfires that's picked up in the ratings. So you've got the firm's actions, and then you've got information that might be available to investors to, to apply pressure uh, through disclosures of the firm's actions. It could be risk disclosures, past event disclosures, and so forth. Uh, and so uh, I'd like to see a little bit more analysis discussion of, of some of those sort of drivers at the firm level that might be producing these changes in the ratings. So that's, uh, th that's sort of one point. Um, second point is, is really the question of you know, what is compelling firms to respond? And that, that is the response that's picked up in the, in the Delta ratings. Um, and it seems when I was reading a paper, it, it it, it was a response that somehow or other was related to the sort of eco-friendly inclination of the firm. Um, and, and that's a quote from the paper. Uh, and then there's cross sections on political affiliation, denial characteristics and so forth. Um, but I was thinking that maybe, maybe it used to be a little bit more um, uh, work analysis on the pressure from investors and creditors, um, rating agencies, shareholder, active, active shareholders, um, and then also you might want to look at what the companies are doing in terms of wildfire risk mitigation, um, adaptation, and then perhaps what they're doing in terms of uh, seeking insurance or having the state insurance markets actually rewrite insurance contracts so they can get better protection. So there's, so a few variables like that, I think, that would sort of build out that middle section of the, of the previous slide that I had. So I'm <clears throat> going to the... <clears throat> Next slide here. Um, I know there's a lot of analysis using the sort of the, the EPA and uh, air enforcement actions and, and sort of making the case that when there's fewer of those, there's more likely to be a, a, a stronger response <clears throat> that, that, that is looking for that negative coefficient. Um, but the question I had, and I don't know 100% the answer here, but the Clean Air Act, that's a CAA, and the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, they do not regulate a wildfire smoke. Um, they may regulate air and a few other things, but they don't reg regulate wildfire smoke other than perhaps controlled burns, but I don't think we're talking about controlled burns. And there's a really good paper by Marshall Burke at Stanford, that's the Burke et al. 2021, and a couple of other papers on that. So I, I think you might want to look at that and, and make sure that the the EPA actions that, that are being um, used here uh, actually do wait relate to wildfires, um, but it could be that they actually relate to something other, I mean, air, air issues, but not, wild, not related to wildfires. Um, a couple of other things, just looking at the county uh, you know, location, um, and I know this applies to other research, but um, just a couple of big anecdotes here, right? If you look at the Lightning Complex Fire of 2020 in Santa Clara County, it's the fourth largest in state history, okay? And Santa Clara, <laughs> Here's the home of Silicon Valley. There's hundreds of companies there, Apple and so forth. Um, uh, but Silicon Valley itself was untouched by, that, by the Santa Clara County because that, that was way south in the county. It's a big county. It's way south, and the smoke didn't come that way. Um, and then the, the second anecdote is, is San Francisco. With the, the slide that you see, that orange slide that you see in the background, that's actually San Francisco under, under sort of serious AQI 
greater than 300 um, uh, um, smoke. Um, but that, those, that smoke was coming from Sonoma County. That's two counties away. Uh, so it wasn't actually the fire in, in, in the Sonoma County was doing damage. It was the smoke that actually drifted into San Francisco County and even drifted into San Mateo in, in Santa Clara County, which is south of San Francisco County. Uh, so you've got damages going in counties which don't actually have wildfires. So these are issues, I think, that can be you know, kind of looked at as part of potentially improving um, uh, some of the issues in the paper. Um, a couple of other suggestions that I'll, 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 find, I'll wind up. Uh, the, the one that I, want, I think is worth looking at is the last one on the slide here. It says, consider normal versus abnormal wildfire measures. Uh, on, so develop a model of sort of the abnormal percentage burn because you're looking at these these ratings. These ratings are a little bit sticky, so you really want to look at the incremental information that would apply to those ratings. So some some something that's to, to do with the abnormal percentage burns, and there's a few other measures of wildfires as well, um, but I won't get into that. So um, so I want to say thank you very much, um, and I have these slides available. I'm sure they could be made available. Uh, to you going. So uh, thanks, you going. Great paper. Enjoyed it and uh, look forward to some comments, responses. Thank you, Professor you, Paul. <laughs> you could have a short response, you going, but maybe leave us a little bit of time for a question or two. Actually, let me, let me un, un, stop share here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Paul. And your comment is very insightful and helpful. Yeah, actually, especially for the mechanism, actually. Hey, sorry, we, all... uh, we just cut out here, but feel free to go ahead. We can hear you again now. Okay. So technical issues, my bad. So can you can go me? ahead, oh. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I said, first of all, give me, give us very insightful and helpful, helpful comments, especially on the mechanism. Yeah, th this is one of the main shortcomings of our paper. We haven't pro provided any empirical evidence on the mechanism, but we are on the way. We are trying to give some empirical evidence on the mechanism. And your suggestion is, uh, yeah, will guide us to do this mechanism analysis. And thank you again. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience here? Okay, I guess I get to have a go as chair. Um, I had one question and it's sort of got answered by Paul, but I was wondering um, when you look at the, your sort of sustainability practices measure, or what do you call it, environmental sustainability or the change in environmental sustainability, do you rely on um, the MSCI data for that and they you know is that the underlying reported data or is it something they've aggregated into some sort of score yeah we aggregate in some yeah, order score do you aggregate it yourself or is that just an MSCI yeah, rate yeah, yeah it, it's according to the literature they have for yeah proposal map to aggregate okay thank you yeah, thank you no one else has questions well in that case uh, we will stick to time um, oh, I had one comment is the headquarters seem to, a lot of them seem to fall outside of where the wildfires are, but I'm imagining, and this is a comment I think you made to David as well, that there's a lot of activities by certain companies in California and Florida, but they may not have headquarters there. Is there any way you can control for that? Uh, David was mentioning some sort of asset level yeah. database. Yeah, it's the same issue. We don't have the data of the burns and yeah. If we, we have the data, I, we can do it further. You might want to email David. He was mentioning something earlier. Um, he might have some useful resources for you. So um, thank you very much, Yugong. And um, you know, thank you for your discussion and your presentation. And we hope you stick around for some of the others.